It's no secret parts of West Michigan are heavily influenced by the Dutch culture, right? We all know this by now. And we also know that in the Dutch culture, windmills serve so many different vital purposes to their livelihood. I think you know where I'm going with this by now. Today, Troy and I take on the Windmill Island Gardens. A dedication to the Dutch, a nod to the Netherlands. Nestled on 36 acres on the northeast end of Holland is a seasonal park surrounded by the Makatawa River, providing a proper peek into Dutch culture. From the architecture... That orphanage was built in the Netherlands, it was 1613. This specific orphanage that this replica is based off of. Exactly. To the attractions... This carousel was actually brought from the Netherlands in the 1970s. And the attire. Matt, before we get into anything about the Windmill Island Gardens, which I can't wait to learn about, we got to talk about the fit here. Mine is called a North Holland work costume. It would have been a working class uh, costume, topped off, of course, by the clumpen at the end, the wooden shoes, which are comfortable. I'm telling you, you got to try them out later. The clumpen comfy. are comfortable. I don't know if I believe you, so I'll have to check it out for myself. The Dutch have a heavy influence on West Michigan, especially in Holland. Matt says it can be traced all the way back to the late 1840s. Reverend Albertus van Ralty and his group of Dutch Calvinists came to America to seek religious freedom and found a home in Holland. That was 175 years ago, and they just kept coming. So we have, it's actually almost a quarter of a million Dutch Americans such as myself. Wow. A lot of us multi-generation uh, Americans, obviously, by now. But a lot of us look back to that heritage. There's some uh, more recent immigrants, but it's just keeping a piece of that heritage alive. In order to truly immerse myself in the culture, I wanted to get a taste of that heritage. I'm throwing on the clumpin, the comfortable clumpin, they as are. you so claim. Wear them around all day, right? That is the plan. I wouldn't have put them on <laughs> otherwise. I'm not going to say they feel like slippers, but they stick on pretty well. <sighs> Usain Bolt. <laughs> Sprinting our way straight to the centerpiece of the park, a giant eight-story windmill. And that windmill specifically is 251 years old, which brings us all the way back to 1771, five years before we signed the Declaration of Independence, just to put that into perspective. And it seems like that is kind of what this entire park was built around. It is, that was, the, the island itself was actually built for that windmill, and then we've just developed around it. And it's so neat, there's parts and pieces of that mill that are actually older than that. Uh, our millwright was here recently, and he found a part he thinks might date back from the 13th century, because our mill was built from pieces of other mills. So that's, that's kind of how they did, it's like building a car. The make and model on this machine is half domestic and half foreign. The wood structure up top was brought over from the Netherlands, and the brick base was built here in America. And it has a name, De Zwan, or The Swan. There's a lot of uh, different windmill names. There was multiple mills in the Netherlands named The Swan, so some of them will say The Swan and then the town they're from to kind of uh, make sure that people know it's not The Swan from another town. De Zwan de Holland. De Zwan de Holland. Ours was De Zwan Winkel. It was the small town in the, uh, the province of North Robin that it was from. So we have a working relationship with that town now. They had actually called uh, over a decade ago asking for this mill back. And we said no, of course, since it's the heart of our community. But they've since uh, built their own mill. So we have a sister mill in the Netherlands. The Netherlands has more than a thousand windmills. De Zwan was brought over to West Michigan in 1964 and opened up to the public a year later. So these are actually bullet holes from World War II. So they came over with the windmill uh, in the 60s, and we replaced them after that and got all new blades in the in 2000. Each of those blades are 80 feet long, crossing in the middle. And it's not just for show. This is the only Dutch windmill that operates in the entire United States. This is where farmers would have come in and dropped off their grain uh, to the miller, and they could actually, there was a grain elevator that they brought it all the way up to the top of the mill by the mill stones uh, by using wind power. So they could drop it off here and then send it back down. When they mill, Matt says, they usually throw a couple of bags of grain in there at a time, which weighs about 100 pounds. This is where I said that there's this grain elevator. This is the top of it. It pops through here, we get the grain. We throw it in the hopper and it gets ground by the power of the mill. This is this equipment is hundreds of years old and to imagine how precise it had to be, you know, it's lubricated with beeswax, not with oil and things like that. So it's just an amazing machine. Then it works its way down here to be packaged. This actually takes way longer than actually grinding does. Hmm. Because um, again, we package in cutesy little bags, you know, one, two pound bags, so visitors can bring them home. Back then they would have just put it in like a 50 or 100 pound sack. So times have changed a bit and nothing highlights that more than your view from the fourth floor, standing in the past 
and looking at the present. And we like to tell people across the way here, that's Holland's new natural gas plant. So that's how they produce power now. And this is how they used to produce power, was using windmills, using water mills. And this whole park is powered by the people. Not too long ago, they only had 40,000 visitors in a full season. And Matt says at one point, they were very close to shutting the entire thing down. But they have since seen a resurgence, setting a new record with 130,000 visitors last year and well on their way to breaking that again this year. In the last few years, we've been having awesome attendance. Uh, we've been, our staff has been great. We're just building new things to invite people out here, and we're seeing people take us up on that. We all know tulip time is a big draw, of course, but that only covers about 10 days of the season. So they're trying to get creative to keep people coming back. Things like a new winter attraction. This is where you'll see a tulip field of LED lights with a music and light show uh, the first three weekends of December. A permanent tulip grove. You can see we're in the process of planting them and painting them, but then we'll develop a nice grove area here. And a water pumping mill. The Netherlands, literally the name means lowlands, so you can see the guys there are turning what in Dutch we call a fizel. Huh. It's really a water screw. It draws water all the way up using this screw and it can be pumped out or pumped in a new canal. They want to push it out and push it back out in the, the ocean. Matt says there's so much to share about the Dutch culture, but just like they do at museums in the Netherlands, they chose to highlight a specific slice of that history. So we try and show a segment of time from the Netherlands about when this community was founded in the 1840s, 1850s. So that's why costumes like these mm -hmm. date from that period. You won't catch Dutch people wearing these around today. They dress way more modern than that's we do That's too here. bad. No, I know. It's, it's, hey, it still looks good. Here at the gardens, that segment of time revolves around three Dutch treasures. The windmill, the carousel. And it was a traveling carousel there, but that would go in fairs, so it'd move around every weekend. And the organ. How long has this thing been around? This is from World War II, it looks like, it also. Is. So this actually predates the island itself. So during World War II, after World War II, the city of Holland and its citizens donated clothing and food and money back to the Netherlands. And as a way to say thank you, a couple years later, the city of Amsterdam, they collected money, bought this organ from an organ uh, grinder, and sent it to the city of Holland as a way to say thank you. This organ is about 100 years old. It was used in tulip time parades for a while, then sat silent for years before it was rebuilt, and now it works. So we had to hear it for ourselves. I'll find you a, a good Dutch song here. And the technology behind this beast will blow your mind. Well, <laughs> at least it did for me. It's a book? It's a book. No way. Yeah. So Look at that. There's, there's keys in the organ here, and they read the different parts of the book that tell them the different parts of the organ to play, as well as what notes to play. So we bring it in here. We'll close down the arm. I'll flip my switch and the organ will play. Each one of those books costs several hundred dollars and has to be arranged for the specific type of organ and key. And this here is the perfect pitch to put you in the heart of Dutch culture. So thank you for leading us around today. Yeah. And I think it's uh, only fitting that we take a, a Fox 17 unfiltered okay. selfie here with the window in the background, of course. Three, two, one. Well, as I'm clomping around, I can look back on the day that we have had here at the Windmill Island Gardens, a literal bridge between West Michigan and Holland. It's an incredible property. And we didn't just move through the mitten today, we milled through the mitten today. Tot ziens. Until next time.